some of you may be thinking immediately, oh, video games, they're, they're lots of fun. Why would you want to ruin them with math and machine learning and all of that? And the other half of you were probably wondering, well, deep learning, it's, it's such an important field, it's such a serious subject, why would you want to trivialize that by applying it to an insignificant problem like learning game strategies? And hopefully by the end of the talk, I'll have convinced both of you, or both of those groups, that this is in fact a very important problem to be looking into. What we really want is for, uh, we want to be able to design an agent that can gain that sort of intuition. Because if we can't just take intuitive feeling and write a program that captures that, the next best thing that we can do is write a program that will be able to obtain that sort of intuition. So in this case, uh, here is an example uh, of a DQ network that I trained, implemented completely in TensorFlow, and we used some high schoolers implementation of Pong that we found on GitHub. Uh, <laughs> you should have seen the code. Uh, <laughs> You can use these same techniques to learn incredibly complicated games that people didn't even think were solvable. Even human players did not, you know, could not put into words why they were acting the way that they did. It's a famous saying that, you know, a chess player is smart, but a Go player is wise. How do you make a machine wise? Well, apparently, using reinforcement learning, you can actually figure that out. What is the future of reinforcement learning now? Now that we've been able to, to do these very difficult problems, where do we go from here uh, besides Skynet? Using tools like TensorFlow, we're able to build convolutional networks uh, and all sorts of complicated models. You can invent your own models. You can put together whatever you want in an incredibly short time span. And you can train it incredibly quickly uh, with new hardware that's coming out, new very powerful GPUs.